you guys have asked me to do a video on putting a gun back together that I've worked on. Um, I've done a lot of work to this Ithaca Model 37 20 gauge. I figured this would be the perfect gun to put back together for you guys. Um, if you looked and saw my pictures that I posted on Facebook before, this thing was pretty much had no finish on it. It was rusty, it was dirty, and filthy. Um, I've blued it. It's made two trips through the bluing process, and that's where I'm going to stop. Normally, I go five to seven, but this gun is going to be 70 years old next year. It's a 1952, and it should look 70 years old. It shouldn't look beat to hell, but it should look 70 years old. So, this is where I'm going to leave it. When you, after it's been all disassembled, when you put it back together, put in the shell stop right here. This fits in a groove that's milled into the side of the receiver. There's one on this side too, but I've already went ahead and put that one back in. That one's got a little spring and a little screw, and quite honestly, it's a pain in the ass. So, and is, next is the shell elevator. That's also the ejector. There's, there's no side port on this gun. It's a bottom eject, which makes it ambidextrous. Um, and my wife is left-handed, so, you know, she wouldn't will probably love this gun. Um, you know, you, you left-handed guys, people, you, you kind of take it in the ass when it comes to these because most guns are right-handed and it's a pain in the ass. Put the bolt and the bolt carrier in, slide it in its grooves, take the other shell stop and push it forward. That opens this up. There's a little notch that slides behind that. All right? Once you get it in, slide the bolt home so it locks. The reason you slide that home so it locks is so that the elevator is kind of free to move. Okay. Once you get that out, it's ready to free to move. You set the gun on its side. Now there's two holes right here. And these bolts are screws that they've got nipples on the end of them, little nipples. There's a joke there somewhere. And take a good well-fitting screwdriver. The the screw screws into the receiver, but this nipple rides in a hole in the shell elevator. And you put that, you get it started straight. I like to start these with my fingers. Cross threading is a bad thing. Well fitted screwdriver, you get it in there. And then you start to feel around for the hole in the, in the elevator. Oh, just a little bit better. You tighten that down. Now you don't want to crank these. There's a reason you don't crank these, and we'll get to that in a minute. There's another one on the other side. Uh, and once you get one in, they pretty much line them, so it'll line itself up. Get these started. Again, use your fingers. down and then back off. And I don't know if it's picking up on the camera but there's another little screw hole here for these other little screws. Um, these drop in right here. Again, if you can, and I might be able to, you start with your finger. Small screwdriver. Get it started. And then you just run this in. Now these locking screws, these need to be somewhat tight so they don't back out. And what this does is it fits in the grooves of the bigger screw and it holds them from moving. You don't want them moving. You really don't want those backing out in the, in the brush or in the, in the weeds or in the woods or hell even at the range. Because then your gun's down and you're missing parts and believe me, finding parts for this gun. They're out there, but you're going to pay for them. I really got lucky that I only had to find the stock. So, believe it or not, that's 90% of the receiver right there. Put that back in the clamp. I like the clamp because it holds it vertical for me. I'm not, I'm not chasing it. Now, 
The, the trigger assembly is it's one piece. It's got another set of machine screws here, or slots rather. kind of work cars whatever these little magnetic trays I don't know if you can see them these guys I love them you, you, you don't lose screws and there are a million little screws that are just waiting to go catapulting across the floor into some dark little cubby hole that you're never gonna find all right so now that's in now Ithaca came up with a genius design, and I'm going to show it to you. It's it, I love it. It's just it's just phenomenal. If you've ever worked on a Winchester and you've tried to put this in, you know it's a royal pain in the ass. Well, Ithaca isn't a pain in the ass. It's great. You take the forend, you slide it over the magazine. And there's a slot in the side. I don't know if you can see it in there. Yeah, you can. But you see this little cross pin right here? It's got a little groove in it. Now right now this will move in and out without moving anything. You take your little tweaker screwdriver, that's what we called them in the Navy. You slide that over, you shove that in, and you let go of that little cross pin. And you're locked up. Oh my Christ, how easy is that? And now, this gun should stroke, believe it or not. It should stroke. So we're going to give it a shot. Oh, look at that. Isn't that sexy? Oh my gosh, that's sexy. Oh, oh, it does things for me. Anyway, next we put in our magazine spring with our plug. This will probably be the only gun I own that has a plug. I, I just, I don't care for them. Um, you don't have to put the plug in yet. I just like it there. Now, we're going to open the action up. Next is the barrel band, or the magazine band. That slides on here. Now there's a groove here that I'm aiming for. Slide the barrel band on until that groove is about centered. Need a little more. And the reason that groove is centered is because this screw runs through it. And it's got to hit that groove. It's got to hit it perfectly. And apparently I can't get perfectly. There we go. There we go. Now, take your fine screwdriver. You run that screw right in. And I don't know anybody that can hit that first time. I'm sure as hell not that guy. Magazine cap. Compress your spring. Screw this down tight. Now, take the barrel. Now, there's a little... In the, in the barrel lug, there's a little notch right here. This goes in. 90 degrees to where it's going to final rest. Goes all the way in there, right? And then you give it a half a turn or a quarter turn. And that lines up on there. Then you unscrew the magazine nut. And you hear that clicking? That's it locking into place. Barrel's on. The little nipple falls in that hole. So we're getting there. Now, remember the buttstock, this guy, this guy is shot. It, they've cut an inch and a half off the end of it. The black stuff is all oil intrusion because they never cleaned the gun. And when the action got sticky, they just added oil to it because they're stupid. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. Believe it or not, this actually fits Franklin. So, 
I'm not going to throw this away. I'm not going to burn it. I'll actually clean it up. And you take the world's longest flathead screwdriver. And actually, folks, I'm going to put this in my vise over here to hold on to it. Play a flashlight. Find out the orientation of the bolt. There we go. And that's tight. That's in frame. I hope it's in frame. But there it is reassembled. 1952 Ithaca Model 37 Feather Light in 20 gauge. Next weekend she goes to get magnafluxed, check for cracks, and then I'm going to shoot it. You guys, take care. Have a happy Halloween. Don't eat too much candy, you'll get a bellyache. Talk to you later.